Hi, a lot of people ask me if they can get a garden tour, so I thought I would put one together for anybody that wants to see it. I have uh, three different sections to my garden, three main sections. I've got the middle orchard, the lower orchard, and I have some, uh, some uh, more zones up by the box. I'm gonna talk about in zones, because that's the way I water. It doesn't exactly match up with the boxes. So many boxes have two zones. Some have only one, but I have 18 zones here in the middle orchard. This is the first zone. It's carrots. They look fantastic coming along. Second zone is, uh, is leeks. They look great too. So this next two zones, I have early tomatoes. I planted these in uh, like April 22nd or 23rd. And if, if you know anything, we had some frosts on uh, May 10th that were bad. And these really, they all died back. But they're all coming back, with the exception of this guy who's struggling a little. They're actually doing quite well. But these were really early planted tomatoes. I took a risk. Did not protect them properly from the frost, but at least they came out okay. Uh, the next two zones, uh, five and six, are more tomatoes. These were actually planted around Memorial Day, but they look fantastic. I started all these plants myself. Come on, we're going to come over to zone seven and eight. If you wondered what those white plastic things are, it's a little easier to show you here. I'll show you in a different box, but this is the watering zone. They're all hooked up and they're all controlled by the phone. Uh, seven and eight are potatoes. They're really doing nice. I think they're going to flower soon. These were planted in March. Uh, uh, nine and ten here is uh, peppers and a little something on the end. But here's uh, yellow peppers, orange peppers, red peppers. Over here are hot peppers. We've got habaneros in this one. We got uh, cayennes over here. And at the end of the row, to make use of all the space, we have. Um, some savoy cabbage. This will keep the moths, uh, especially the cabbage moth, off of the cabbage type plants. These I've made myself. Maybe I'll do a video on how to make them. They're relatively uh, straightforward uh, and easy to make and they, they really do control those beetles great. Okay, so the next four zones here are garlic. This is 11, 12, 13, and 14. Uh, the garlic is four different varieties here. What do we got over here? Can you see that? This is music garlic, German red garlic. I don't find that much difference between the garlics, but I like to kind of keep these species going and, and plant a lot of different kinds of garlics. These will be ready in just a couple of weeks. They're starting to skate. And anybody that has never grown garlic uh, rarely has heard of these things. And we're going to clip these off and we're going to eat this part from here to here. Next thing you'll see here is what I've done around a lot of the boxes is these railings that I've made out of PVC. They're fantastic, they're easy, they're cheap, they're modular. And you can obviously you can see they're everywhere in the garden. The watering system's made out of PVC. I'll show you some other support stuff. Uh, it's also been made out of PVC. These are fava beans. This is zone 15 and 16. And uh, they're looking pretty great too. Last one I'm gonna show you over here. Is these are the two new ones, so they became 17 and 18. All right, we have some bush beans. These were also planted early, a little bit on a risk, but they look like they're coming out okay. I think they need probably a little water. And some extra tomatoes. And my other new, new one, these are the uh, pandemic boxes. I built these two because we were under quarantine. Okay, so that's the middle orchard. Let's go down and see the lower orchard. So uh, this is the lower orchard. As I mentioned, the 16 zones here. Uh, in this zone, we have some beets. These were planted really early. And with a little, uh, a little bone meal, which I recommend for the beets, they're really coming out great. Can you get the camera in there? Can you, can you see that it's really, uh, they'll be ready to eat soon, some of these. I have another batch of these that are running a little later in the, uh, the zones closer to the house. These are some onions. And over here, you can see in here, this you've got to protect these broccolis or they just get just disgusting with the worms. You can see some broccoli shoots. We already took some of the main heads. If you can get in there, they look really nice. It's a little different dimensions for a different type of cabbage. Okay, so there's uh, zone two and three in the lower orchard. This is for soybeans. Uh, if you back up a little and just kind of show, everybody always says to me, soybeans get that tall? Soybeans are going to get uh, taller than the top of this railing. Uh, they're fantastic for eating. These are not really soybeans for making meal out of. These are soybeans for making uh, regular meals out of. Uh, they, I guess we would call these edamame. Uh, also PVC, right? Here's another PVC structure. This is going to be uh, pole beans. 
Um, I used to use these vertically and instead I kind of found that uh, horizontal caging is uh, much more effective in terms of cleaning up and it holds the plants just as well and it actually can get more beans in this space. This is, uh, it takes a, maybe two or three hours to make one of these things. You can't get this anywhere, but this will last forever. And uh, yeah, those are Portuguese, Portuguese uh, flat beans. It'll be like uh, Italian flat beans. Really delicious for fresh and soup. Here's my peas. We got shelling peas. We've got uh, snap peas. We've got snow peas. Uh, I really uh, came up with this system here just to hold the whole thing together. They need a little bit of taller caging. And I might expand this if I like it and see how it works out, but it, it looks like it's going really well and it can even stay in here if I wanted to. All right, why don't we come over, we'll go the other way. This is zones uh, 11 and 12. You can see we have some Portuguese cabbage in here. This can be, this is not going to form a head. We can pick these anytime we want. If you can show over there, back there, that's some Brussels sprouts and just another broccoli in there. And you can show the lettuce. This lettuce is, ends up being extra lettuce because um, we have so much up in the greenhouse, I'll show you. In here we have some uh, more broccoli, and I believe that this cage, I just made this one this year, is going to be more appropriate. Broccoli gets so tall, uh, it kept growing uh, and getting squashed at the top of these bug cages, so uh, hopefully this taller one will do the trick. The only problem is it, it can blow away, so we put this, the, the bricks on it until I come up with a better method. Okay, this middle box, these are French horticultural beans. I love these so much. These are called what I call shelling beans. They're going to be, uh, they're really for soup, but you open them up when they're fresh and then you freeze them. They're these very large beans and they make tastier soup than dried beans rehydrated. And again, these are these uh, bean scaffoldings, I call them. I made them uh, pretty cheap, pretty great. Maybe I'll do a video on that. And a whole other box of onions, purples, yellows, and whites. And that's the these are the first 12 zones down here, and then we come, we got the last uh, uh, four zones. Each one of these really only one zone because they're squash. This one's not planted yet, it's for watermelon, but let's come take a look back here. The idea was to kind of make these no-till boxes. Um, I'd like, probably should do a video on that, on how to do a no-till box, because I don't want to take this stuff out and in every year. It's a pain in the butt. So it kind of uh, evolved into a no-till box. But it really is going so well, I think I might uh, kind of expand it to other parts of the garden. Okay, so here is uh, the butternut squash. There is some spaghetti squash that was attacked by cucumber beetles. Doesn't matter if you're a good gardener or a bad gardener. Uh, the beetles will come. But uh, we're trying to control them naturally, organically. And it seems like uh, so far uh, things are recovering. These are uh, pumpkins. Why don't we go take a look at the other two lower orchard boxes. Over here, uh, we just use uh, grass to control the weeds. I think my dogs probably dug this up. But just use grass around these boxes to control the weeds and just wood so we can walk on it. It gets a little muddy down here. Okay, over here we have zucchini. Three zucchinis. They look pretty good, even though they got hit by the cucumber beetles as well, but they really are, they're, they're really coming along strong. And then back here, again, you can see that relatively significant cucumber beetle damage but um, you know again I think they're coming back we'll have to check again to see how well we're controlling them but right now they look like there's uh, very few kind of cucumber beetles and these are cantaloupes also to the extent that they look a little sickly the cucumber beetles it was just so bad this year because I think the um, the winter uh, was so mild and uh, some of the no-till method I might have to modify to try and help control some of the uh, cucumber beetles but that's the lower orchard Let's go see the orchard by the, um, let's go see the, um, the boxes and the zones by the house. So this is the, I call this the patio um, boxes. This first one has some um, beets in it. These are coming along, but these were actually planted much later than the other ones. Goes to show some more potatoes because you can't ever have enough potatoes. Back here, we have some New Zealand spinach. What I love about the New Zealand spinach is not only is it a great plant to eat, but it self-seeds itself. So every year, if you look over here, if you can show on the camera, you see, just hundreds of these will come up and the strong will survive and push the rest out. And it happens every year. This is some cilantro that also self-seeded. We're going to let this go to seed again. See if it can keep coming up in this box. This box is just about finished. 
It's got some spinach in it that's going to seed, some carrots that are useless, and that one in the middle is a single lettuce plant that got a little out of control. I don't think I've ever quite seen it so big, but I wouldn't necessarily eat that. It's a little hard. Um, but let's go take a look in the greenhouse. Oh, well, we got one more box here. This is the more potatoes. This is the last of the potatoes for now. In about two, three more weeks, I'm going to plant some more potatoes to get some fall potatoes. But these will be done in August. This is the greenhouse. A few more onions just to see if they do any better in here. You always got to test things out. Got some arugula going to seed. That's going to self seed itself as well as it did last year. This is our salad department. Looks like somebody's been here and had some salad, but this is where we grow the salad. We've got some cabbages. Um, a lot of the salad just came up by itself. The, the lettuce will self seed as well. We have some early planted cucumbers because we're inside a greenhouse. Some parsley that's going to seed. A few tomatoes uh, left. And um, that's it. That's uh, that's the that's the tour.